Another caching option is the page output cache. Now this requires that SharePoint's publishing features are enabled and this caching option is configured per site collection, site, and page layout. As with all things in SharePoint's hierarchical model, sites and page layouts by default inherit the cache settings of the site collection, though this can be customized as needed. So what does page caching do? Well, as the name implies, page output caching stores the rendered output of a page. A page's first request will be the slowest, but then subsequent requests will be served up from the already cached version, thus increasing the perceived page performance. The settings for page output caching are configured with cache profiles that specify how long items should remain in the cache before they must be recached. And what's great about this is that you can specify different profiles for different authentication methods. So for a public facing, relatively static site, you may opt to cache things much longer than you would for an internal only collaborative site. It's also possible to create custom cache profiles if you like, if the default ones do not meet your needs, and you would do that at the web application level. Let's take a look at enabling the page output cache for our public facing website. I'm here on the home page of globalmantics.com, our public facing internet presence website. And due to the nature of the content exposed here, I think it'd be beneficial to enable page output caching to increase performance. Perhaps I've seen a bottleneck or actually in the Global Mantics case, the governance board has determined that let's just turn it on. So I'm going to use the site actions menu and navigate down to my site settings. And I have to be a site collection administrator to do this, but under site collection administration, I have two links related to this, site collection cache profiles and site collection output cache. Now the cache profiles are the optimized profiles depending upon the authentication method. We have the disabled profile, the public internet, extranet, and intranet. And for details related to each of these, you simply click on them. And disabled, of course, there's not much to. Caching's not enabled. Pure public internet, purely anonymous, says it's optimized for the public internet facing sites or areas that are meant to serve the same content to all users. No authentication check. Any user requesting a page receives the same page as any other user. Okay, that's probably what we'll enable. Then extranet, for a published site. Notice specifies that authoring does not take place on the tier. Well, in our case, the www.globalmantics.com site, my internal Global Mantics employees will be authoring on this tier. And any anonymous user will just be viewing the latest published content. So this extranet option is really not one that I'm going to enable because I am authoring. The intranet says this one's optimized for collaboration sites where authoring is enabled. Okay, great. So I've looked at my cache profiles. I can certainly add a new one and configure it accordingly with my timings and everything. But let's go back to our site settings, scroll down and select our other link, site collection output cache. And you can see that by default it's disabled, but let's enable the output cache. And for the anonymous cache profile, well, we'll choose the purely anonymous option. And for the authenticated cache profile, let's choose that intranet because we are authoring content. Scrolling down, we have options for subsites and page layouts. If I wanted to, I could allow subsites to use different profiles or page layouts to use different profiles. But as a general best practice in SharePoint, we want to leave these things as inherited. So we'll just click OK. And that's that. Now I've enabled the page output cache on www.globalmantics.com.